Thank you so much for watching this video. The topic is on the information processing theory. Remember that the best way to study is to create practice tests, and if you can't find good practice tests, build your own using the Learn My Test Study tool. It's absolutely free at www.learnmytest.com. You can also check out our growing list of test banks for tests in your field of study. Thank you again for watching the video. The information processing theory is based on the principle that your brain is kind of like a computer. Short-term memory is the processor and long-term memory is the hard drive. Short-term memory is what you're aware of at this very second. So if you're watching this video, my voice right now in the picture on the screen is in your short-term memory. On average, you can hold about seven digits of information in your short-term memory. So really, your short-term memory does not hold a lot of information. The capacity is very small. On the other hand, your long-term memory holds a ton of information. In fact, everything that's ever happened to you in your life is stored in your long-term memory. The process of taking a memory from your short-term memory and storing it into your long-term memory is called encoding. And the process of taking an old memory from your long-term memory and bringing it to your consciousness or your awareness or your short-term memory is called retrieval. There are certain wavelengths of light that we cannot see and because we cannot see them, they're not gonna come into our consciousness or a short-term memory. There are also certain sounds that are so quiet that we won't hear them or we'll only hear them 50% of the time. And so in order for information to enter our short-term memory or our consciousness, it has to be detected by our senses. This is called sensory memory. Sensory memory for visual information or vision is called iconic memory, while sensory memory for auditory information is called echoic memory. Your short-term memory does not hold a lot of information, like I said previously, so it can get overwhelmed when it experiences lots of sensory information all at once. The process of filtering out all that information so only the important information gets into your short-term memory is called selective attention. Selective attention allows you to ignore noises in the library while you are trying to write a big term paper. People with ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder often have trouble with this filter of selective attention and the unimportant stuff tends to make it into short-term memory, which makes it difficult for them to concentrate and finish tasks. People wanted to know with selective attention, can you pay attention to more than one visual or auditory task at a time? The dichotic listening task is a study where the experimenters gave people headphones and played two stories in their ear at the same time telling them to focus on story A while ignoring story B. The goal was to see if they would still pick up or remember anything from the story that they did not pay attention to. The results were that most people did not remember the story in the ear that they did not pay attention to, except maybe the gender of the speaker, which suggests that people may struggle to focus on more than one auditory task at a time. However, we can do a visual task and a separate auditory task at the same time without any problem. This explains why we can drive a car, a visual task, and talk on the cell phone, an auditory task, at the same time without any problems. This led researchers to come up with a different conceptualization of short-term memory called working memory that includes a component for auditory information called the phonological loop and a component for visual information called the visuospatial sketch pad. So let's break it down. You have sensory memory that is what your senses detect in your environment. Sensory memory for visual information is iconic, while sensory memory for auditory information is echoic. Sensory information goes through a filter called selective attention that removes unimportant information from your environment 
so it does not reach your short-term memory. Information that goes through selective attention makes it to short-term memory. Researchers came up with this idea called working memory, which is short-term memory with a visual component, the visual spatial sketch pad, and an auditory component, phonological loop. Once information makes it to short-term memory or working memory, it gets stored into long-term memory through a process called encoding. Long-term memories can be brought to our consciousness or short-term memory or working memory through a process called retrieval. Thank you for watching this video. If you are in a psychology course and enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on our most recent videos. Also, check out some of our other videos as they may cover a lot of the material that will be discussed in your class. Remember that the best way to study is to take practice tests, and if you need good practice tests, make your own and learn while you do it using our free study tool at www.learnmytest.com. Also, check out our growing database of psychology tests or look for one in your field of study.